So this time I actually broke the slant six and had to be towed home because there was no even turning the engine over. So last video I did where I uh, had to haul this, this duster home, I had one commenter say that it's an oxymoron to uh, say a broken slant six, but uh, reality is all machines will break. And this one is a fairly common failure, um, especially with modern oil pumps, but let's kind of get more into what happened. So there's a couple reasons I know this is a oil pump issue and first is some point on the morning commute to work I saw the oil pressure gauge was reading zero now I'm running an auto meter um, stepper motor type gauge and it's fairly common that that fails to go through the boot sequence the other ones seem to be fine but the oil pressure just randomly doesn't make it through the start cycle normally I uh, make a note of this in my head and just don't worry about it. Uh, I have two pressure sensors on the car. One is strictly for the ECU and the other is for that auto meter gauge. So at one point I had the uh, Haltech 2500 set to do engine protection if it was low oil pressure, but that was a little bit uh, finicky. I know they've updated the firmware, but I never uh, reset that option. I still had it to where it would set a check engine light and Unfortunately, on the drive, I did get a check engine light, but it's fairly common in this car. I mean, it, injector impedance, I mean, it, it, that's one of the most common, is it says injectors out. I don't know if it's quality injectors and how they're measuring it, but uh, yeah, I uh, checked real quick, and I had nothing with me to check what that particular check engine light was for and car was running just fine so I figured it's one of these common faults I get with the Haltech. So in a little bit farther down the road I notice on the bank's i-dash that the oil temperature was actually quite low and it was at that point I realized that I probably was in trouble and part of the reason for that is the oil temperature on this one is in line with the feed line to the turbo so it has to have flow out of the oil pump for it to really get a temperature reading and I think it was reading uh, 120 degrees and it been running for 20 minutes so a um, little too cold not drastically but uh, yeah shortly after that uh, the engine seized well at highway speed and yeah let her coast to a nice parking spot and thought I'd at least try cranking it and the little uh, high-speed starter I have in it couldn't turn it at all. In fact, uh, that dropped the voltage in the car enough to kill all the electronics and that caused a different problem later once I got it back to the shop. But yeah, the sucky part is when you own your own tow truck but you're in your car away from the shop, you, well, you gotta hire someone else. So, I, well, and it was more, I was close to a body shop I'd worked with. In fact, the car had just the day before been released from getting a little bit of paint work done to uh, fix a big flake that had come off the car. So yeah, less than 50 miles since I had it out of the shop. So when I got it back, I did hook up the laptop, check the check engine codes. Now. I had a string of them. Most of them uh, were CAN bus related stuff and that's pretty common I've noticed if the voltage will drop too low and like your battery's drained enough that it won't turn it enough to start. Uh, I, you get those error codes every time and that's just the voltage dropped enough that it lost signal with all the CAN bus items. So I had a whole list of error codes but in that was an oil pressure operating one. So there was my other clue that I was dealing with an oil issue. Now once a car cooled down, the starter could turn it a little bit at a time, um, eighth or quarter turn, so way too high a load, and 
I, I did have someone say maybe you got a bad starter but uh, when I put on a uh, breaker bar on the crank and showed how difficult it was to turn he was like, okay maybe not, not the starter Now another factor that really showed this was a oil issue is when I was side of the road just after it had stalled, the only thing smoking and smoking quite a bit was actually the turbo. And that's not a good sign. I mean either you lost coolant, which probably won't smoke it if you're not driving hard. Um, but yeah, losing losing oil to it because that is also cooling your turbo. But uh, keeping those bearings going and yeah, she was done. So when looking for oil issue in an engine like this, so this this car's got so much stuff on it that it's uh, not easy to dig into. But yeah, obviously check your dipstick. I mean, what do you have on that? What does it look like? Do you see any metal? there odds are that it's already dropped to your crankcase but still check it see how it looks smells drain your oil uh, I'm using a magnetic uh, drain plug so check for metal filings and that and I had a fair amount but not bearing metal and it did kind of make me wonder a little bit uh, a sudden increase on very small what looks like cast iron shavings and I mean later I end up figuring out why that was but still that's more metal than you should have from a single oil change so and you can see how small that uh, little magnet actually is once you get it cleaned up um, these are good additions to any car I tend to have a lot of magnets in the car including one in the radiator uh, great for catching the old rusty particles and getting that out of the system now the other thing you're going to do is change your oil. Well, not change it. Let's drain the oil and look at the quality of it. So here I'm draining it out to just look for metal flakes. That's why it's a nice slow pour. I'm looking in the bottom of the pan. Um, for the most part, since it's so hard to turn the engine, you're you're looking for bearing material, and that's going to be a bright brighter stuff in color. Um, sometimes you'll get kind of coppery colors depending on the bearing materials but for the most part it'll be a bright silver type color um, not like chrome bright but still but your engine bearings are uh, an aluminum alloy with a steel backing uh, it's called a babbitt material and it, it will look a lot like aluminum when you're trying to find filings now i was kind of surprised i really didn't find anything from draining the engine like this um, probably the engine just sat long enough it had all settled too low in the oil pan and didn't flow out when I pulled the plug. Well and of course I'm still on a track of even though I'm not finding many clues of problems as I still know this is an oil pump problem because that's how you're gonna take out turbo and engine at the same time and so I pulled the distributor which runs on the same camshaft gear as the oil pump it runs a plastic gear so I figured if I saw any damage there odds are that cam gear or oil pump because if the oil pump gear goes bad it's probably going to get some metal in that plastic it was in surprisingly good shape so my next step was let's cut apart our oil filter look inside for any metal material inside that and yeah it was actually pretty clean and so on to keep tearing the engine apart so now the turbo itself of course I finally tore enough stuff above it to get to the uh, impeller and although it still spun it has a lot of wiggle to it so the journal bearings are out on that turbo it's of course fairly new and so yeah I get to rebuild yet another turbo yay but yeah here I'm actually trying to turn the engine, see if I can get around. So I did manage to use the starter enough to keep bumping it around to get all of the uh, bolts off of the torque converter from the flex plate so I could actually separate the engine and because it's going to pull it out the top rather than it. I have a four post lift, not a two. If I had a two, I could have dropped it all out, left AC in place, but uh, 
went ahead and uh, drained the AC system and taken the engine out the top with the transmission still left in the car. So in this car I've got to drain several different coolants and Freon and power steering. It's There's a lot of fluids to drain. Some will be um, processed and recycled and others it was time to change anyway. Now I did find the turbo had come loose yet again so at some point I'll probably make a new manifold and switch to a V-band turbo versus the T4 flange. Get rid of that problem. So some of you are probably thinking that the main problem here is like main bearings, uh, maybe cam bearings. So various engines depending on how the oil system goes and how you have things piped. That could be a failure. Now this slant 6 has an oil, well any slant 6 has an oil pump mounted off the side of the engine. In an A body you have to pull the engine out of the car to get that out because of the long shaft. You can get the bolts off but you'll never get it pulled out. You might be able to jack the engine around depending what you have in there. But since I can't turn the engine obviously I have to pull it anyway. So went ahead and pulled the oil pump because it's the only thing that could take out the turbo and the main bearings at the same time. So didn't know if somehow the pickup screen got clogged. Judging by how clean it was in the engine, taking the head off, all that, that was highly unlikely. Uh, you know, maybe this the pickup screen was gone and something got picked up and put in the impeller and seized it. But um, no, nope, reality is, is what um, I've seen on the Slant 6 forums is a fairly common problem nowadays is inferior drive gears on modern oil pumps and wouldn't it surprise me if since this engine rebuild was done 27 years ago that uh, I probably got one of the early ones with bad gear. In the 60s, 70s, and 80s, oh. has been wow. the now bear in mind this rebuilt engine has been on the road for 27 years and 100,000 miles. Most of the engine could probably just be overhauled, throw back in. I'm not going to. I'm going to rebuild an engine for this. But uh, yeah, I was pleased with most of the condition, but not this oil pump. That's our failure. Oil pump, and I'll probably do a bunch more videos as I rebuild an engine for it. Um, the engine going in will be have a little more thought put into it for being a turbocharged car and fix a few little problems I found along the way and I'll probably walk you through with upcoming videos so if you want to see more uh, like subscribe alert all that good stuff and uh, well thanks for watching